THC, we hardly knew ye. We'd like to thank you for all your years of service with a work lunch party with moderately priced alcohol-free champagne, a gold watch, and a firm handshake as you ride off into the sunset. Hard times, daddy. There is a new crop of cannabinoids now, a young, hungry group of molecules that are taking the world by storm. You know what that means. New video series, a whole new world of acronyms, effects, education, edutainment, whichever you choose. Choose now. Today we begin our series on rare cannabinoids starting with the godfather, the originator, the geriatric generator of all things cannabis, CBG. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, Dr. Ife Abiola here, and this is today's itinerary. Today we're discussing CBG, and first let's start off with the name. CBG is a shortening of cannabigerol. Canna cannabigerol. Cannabigerol is the progenitor of THC and CBD, and hundreds of naturally occurring cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. There's your answer, but CBG has to come from somewhere. Well, all the tolic acid in the plant is interacted on with geraninol pyrophosphate. And this makes CBGA CBG's precursor acid. And here CBGA has a couple of options or ultimatums. It's acted on by enzymes, chemicals that transform one molecule to another molecule, namely THCA synthase and CBDA synthase, amongst others. And after these enzymes do their thing, we get THCA and CBDA. Or the old dog CBGA can stay how it is and fight another day. But this doesn't happen. Cannabigerol is easily made, but it's not easily kept. As a result, CBG never had a chance to shine as a contender in the cannabis world. In fact, CBG makes less than 1% of the total cannabinoids in the flowering stage of cannabis. But through technology, we can rebuild him. Stronger, faster, without a high. Whoa, hold up, wait a minute. That's right, without a high. When CBGA is decarboxylated, this is where heat is used to remove that acid part and activate it. It still does not cause a high. It behaves differently than THC in that it does not cause a high. Unfortunately, fortunately, in reality. But I'll give you this, at the end of the video, I will tell you how CBG, a cannabinoid that does not cause a high, can be used to give you a high different than THC. So hold tight. But why can't CBG cause a high on its own? Well, CBG is what we call a CB1 antagonist. This means it competes for those CB1 receptors in your brain that cause a high. But as an antagonist, it competes for them not to turn them on, but to turn them off. So it struggles against the presence of THC to do its own thing. So it's no fun and it's against fun? Is CBG taking applications for best friend? So really then, what's the hype? Why have all these pot nerds, geeks, dweebs, dorks, why have they hyped this up for so many years? Because it has incredible potential. Let's take a look at the effects. CBG, very powerful anti-inflammatory. So for you deep divers, dweebs, CBG has been shown to limit intraleukin-1 beta, TNF-alpha, and PPAR gamma. This means it lowers the inflammatory markers significantly, not just in the body, but in the brain, which means it's a neuroprotectant. It could keep your brain from the effects of aging and the effects of all the other things we put into our brains and bodies regularly. But what else? It's also a hunger stimulant. Oh, like the munchies. No, not like the munchies. This is a more ravenous type of hunger, not a fun hunger. This is a mighty need. An aggressive hunger. And now the big kicker, CBG's potential effects. There is heaps of evidence that CBG could increase osteoblastic activity. In layman's terms, this means that it could help maintain or even possibly rebuild bone and joint and other connective tissues integrity. As we age, bones accumulate their share of wear and tear. So it has a lot of promise in this regard while maintaining the brain. So the things that go as we get older are essentially slowed down by CBG, fountain of youth, or stretching the truth. So there's much promise in CBG because of its unique effects, and there's a lot of research going on right now about what it can do and to what extent it can do it. And now the dosing. There's no real dosing regimen with CBG, for now. But we know it's safe and there's no toxicity risk. But how much should you be using? Well, well, how much you can use is the real question. But if you want to use CBG to enhance or augment your experience, you're high. Here's what you can do. Remember how I mentioned that THC and CBG kind of fight and fight for different goals in those precious CB1 receptors? Remember? Well, the agonist THC and the antagonist CBG warring it out actually has a very unique effect and an effect that's like nothing else. It gives a unique buzz when you combine them. 
It's more body focused. And it's different than the body high that you'll feel in certain THC only strains. So what does this mean? Go and try out some CBG already, you baloney. There is CBG only flower on the market out there for you inhalers. And those THC CBG combination products too. Gummies and the like. They give you that new high, that new buzz. You know the one. It's like that new math. It's tough to describe, but it adds up. Also, old people will be reluctant to try it, but it will help them out around the youth. So get out there and try some CBG. A really great bud tender should be able to tell you all about it. And remember to keep your eyes and ears open for all that new research about CBG and its potential. But on that note, I hope you learned something new and exciting about CBG. Until the next cannabinoid and the next time, I'll see you soon.